James, the brother of Jesus, is really the perfect man to preach about prayer. He, he, he's amazing when he speaks about prayer because he saw Jesus communicate with God for his entire life. And when you are that close to Jesus, you're going to learn something about how to communicate with God. You know, when you grow up in the same household, you're going to figure out how to communicate with God. And do you know that James was so much a man of prayer that it was recognized not just by the early Christians, but it was also recognized by all of the Jewish leaders that valued prayer as well. He was so recognized for being a praying person that he was allowed, even though he was a believer of Jesus, he was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies in the temple, a place reserved only for the high priest. He was allowed to go in and out whenever he wanted to pray because all eight sects of Judaism acknowledge that this man has something special on his life. And when he prays, things begin to happen. 30 years, he pastored the church in Jerusalem. And after 30 years, in ending his letter, he ends it and he chooses to talk about prayer. He's going to sum up the book of wisdom. And the whole book of wisdom ends on prayer. The, 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 the legend goes, the story goes, that he, he was so much a man of prayer, spending so much time on his knees. They said his knees looked like camel's knees. They were, they were so beat up from the fact that he was constantly on his knees praying before God. You know, I've heard throughout, uh, uh, I've heard many stories about great people. And let me tell you, great people, there's no such thing as great people. There's only a great God. And the closer you get to a great God, you become a great person. And the way you do that is through prayer. And let me tell you, there's so many amazing stories of people that got to know God that would have similar stories. They said of Smith Wigglesworth, the great revivalist healing preacher, that after he died, they went up to his room and they found two indentations about an inch deep into the wood of his room, about a foot apart, and it was in the place that he would pray. You know, I know of my great-grandmother. She, uh, she was a missionary to Zimbabwe for most of her life. She had a rug that she would put beside her bed, and she would get down and pray uh, every single day, multiple days. And she prayed so much that the rug would get worn out. She would throw the rug out and have to get another rug, rug after rug, because that's how much she prayed. But let me tell you, when she spoke about God. She did not speak about a, a, a myth, a legend, an abstract force, a thing of nature, a revive. She talked, a she talked about a person who was in the room that she knew. And that comes through prayer. It's so powerful. It, it's so mighty. And, and I think the reason we don't pray sometimes isn't because we don't, we don't believe that prayer is powerful. We know it is. And I think it's simply that we don't understand what it is and maybe how to go about it. But let me just tell you simply this. This is what prayer is. Prayer is simply communicating with your creator. That's what prayer is. It's simply communicating with your creator. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a prayer group and we say, all right, you pray. And the guy says, I don't know how to pray. Well, you just communicated to me. Do that to him. Start with saying, God, I don't know how to pray. And let's see where it goes from there. Just say the word Jesus if you don't know what to do. The reality is you do know how to communicate. Some of us have better communication skills than others, but that's all right. God's the one that gave you your communication skills in the first place. He's not up there judging you on the lack of communication skills you have. He's up there saying, no, I know it's tough, but just keep coming. Just keep coming. It's as simple as that. Prayer is communicating with your creator. It, it, it doesn't take a, a certain candle being lit. It doesn't take a certain song being played to get you in the mood. I think that's sometimes why Christians don't pray is because we try and make it too spiritual. Seriously. I think we think we need to feel a move before we pray. And that's not how prayer works. It's not how prayer works. It's not how any relationship works. If you're going to make decisions off emotions, you're never going to do it. No, you pray because you need prayer. You pray because you need someone to help you become powerful and effective. You pray because that's, that's, that's how you process. I, I don't know about you, but I found for myself that I am a verbal processor, right? Surprising, I became a preacher, right? I'm a verbal processor. I talk out my thoughts out loud. And sometimes it takes a long time, you know, and I, I didn't really know this about myself until I got married. After I got married, I found out a lot of things about myself. <laughs> I, thought I, was, I thought I was doing great, and then I got married, and I got work to do, people, you know? And so now I call my wife all the time. You know, I call her all the time just to, just to think out loud, you know, and sometimes she's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, and I know she's, she's, you know, shopping at Lowe's, uh-huh. I think she mutes me sometimes, you know, I think she mutes me and then just unmutes, uh-huh, you know, sometimes, and, and I remember I used to do that to my mom, and now it's coming full circle. <laughs> 
But uh, that, that's how I am. I don't know how you process. Maybe you process, you know, you think about it over and over and over and over and over and you, you, you know, can't sleep at night. Maybe the way you process is you have to write things down and, and you have a journal. Maybe, maybe you don't process through things and that's, that's a problem. You know, I, I don't know how you process, but for me, I, I verbally process. Can I submit to you that, that's, that prayer is simply processing? Simply processing. It's simply coming before God and letting him know where you're at, what you need, what you're thinking, what you're hoping, what you're afraid of, what's going wrong in life. It's simply processing it. And can I say this? It's, it's processing you to God. But here's the beautiful thing about prayer. It's also God processing you. You're processing to God, but it comes back around and God begins to process you. And you'll notice if you pray any, any time longer than 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, if you pray even for a little bit amount of time, God will suddenly begin to reveal things to you that, that, you, didn't, that you didn't know, or, or he'll show you things from another perspective. You'll get a thought that you didn't have about a situation. You say, you know what? Maybe the person said this because of, of what they're going through with that. And you think you thought it, but it wasn't. It was in prayer. God's processing you. He's helping you get over the offense that you had with a person that you never really should have had, and he's showing you another side. He's opening a door just a little bit so you can see a different image, and then you're able to now begin the process of forgiving that person that said that thing. That's, that's what God does in prayer. He processes. You know, sometimes, you, you, you know, one of the reasons I think a lot of people don't pray is they always feel too tired to pray. But the ironic thing is, no matter how, high, how tired you are, if you pray for just a few minutes, you come out of prayer rejuvenated. And, and, then, and then the next time you go to pray, you think, oh, I'm just too tired to pray, not knowing. Part of the process is God begins to give you divine strength. He, he begins to lift your heart up. Maybe you weren't so tired. You were just beat down, and you needed some healing. You needed some anointing. You needed some encouragement. That happens in prayer. The prayer is, is simply that. It's you processing to God and God processing you. Sometimes he'll convict you and say, you know what? You're, you're, you keep complaining to me about anger, but here's the cause of the anger. You keep complaining to me about lust, but here's the cause of lust. You keep saying, Lord, take away this feeling, but you keep doing this thing which causes this feeling. And only God will be honest with you like that. Only God. Your friend will just be like, oh, I know it. Forever. Oh, I'm with you. I hear you. But God will say, it's your fault. L lovingly. Lovingly. He'll do that in prayer, and he'll say, let's, let's deal with the cause, not just the consequence. That happens in prayer, and he's so faithful, and it's so amazing, and it's so normal. It's so real. It's, it's who he is and, and how he communes with us. And so for me, my goal is to pray first in life. That, that's my, my goal, is, is to become, become someone that my first reaction is prayer. And this is something that I'm, I should say like I'm traveling towards. I don't know if I've hit the mark yet, but this is something I'm traveling towards. I want my first reaction to be prayer. Because the reality is many of our first reactions is to flip out or to get angry or to react or to get someone else's opinion or to go online. Our first reaction many times is all natural, you know, and rarely supernatural. Like my goal is my first reaction to be prayer, but to be honest, many times mine and yours and our first reaction is something totally opposite prayer. And it's like our last reaction is prayer. Like once we've exhausted all possibilities, we say, now I'm going to pray about it. And we even like make it like it's a virtue. After you've tried everything else, pray. No, pray before you try every dumb idea you got. Pray first. You know, I, I want godly counsel, but first and foremost, I want God's counsel. Before I go get godly counsel, let me get God's counsel and then get some godly counsel. That's prayer. And, and I'm telling you, it's a journey. It's a journey where I, I, I'm, I'm trying to uh, move my life in that direction, where I'm beginning to just come before God. Like, like Nehemiah, when he went before the king, he prayed under his breath, Lord, tell me what to say. He didn't say it out loud. He didn't light a candle. He didn't have some beads to help him. He just talked to God. Tell me what to say, Lord. And God gave him the right words to say in front of the right authority at the right time. Let me tell you, that's how God wants to help you. He's saying, pray under your breath. Pray at all times. Pray first. Let me help you through this thing. He's got divine wisdom, and he's got divine help to help you through life. And I think sometimes the reason we, we don't pray first is because it's supernatural, and we're, it's just supernatural enough for us to forget about it and live in the natural. But I would say if we could move ourselves over and include prayer into our natural, I think our natural would become a lot more supernatural. Supernatural.